in my research, I've come across a lot of it girls and models and beautiful people. But I think someone who's maybe underrepresented as far as people in the public eye go is Maureen Starkey. She kind of had the sort of every fangirl's dream come true for a time. She was a regular girl, a hairdresser, a woman looking after her own business who just happened to catch the eye of one Ringo Starr of a little band called The Beatles. And they got married and had a bunch of kids and it was a grand old time, give or take. From what I've read of other people's accounts of her, I get the impression that she was an absolutely wonderful, lovely lady. Really, really kind, really sweet, but she was a Liverpool girl, so she had tough skin and she knew how to hold her ground. And she had a really cool style throughout the 60s and into the 70s, when everyone was doing sort of bright pops of colour and soft pastel tones and things. She played up the dark. Just an all-around sort of badass, cool girl, tough exterior. So today I thought I'd give her look a try, and I've got a couple outfits over here for later. I'm gonna start, I think, with the hair. And I think I'm gonna go for an updo, a thick, heavy, long fringe. I'm gonna bring my fringe down, and I'm also going to attempt some backcombing to get sort of a bit of a beehive thing going on. I've seen a lot of tutorials for this kind of look, but I'm still not good at it. Like any Beatles partner, she dealt with fan hate and threats, but she stayed grounded and I think helped the boys stay grounded too. Both Patty Boyd and Cynthia Lennon described her kindness. She was lovely and a good friend, and she and Cynthia stayed friends for almost 30 years. So I've got it, I've got the height now. I should probably hairspray this, but I can't really be bothered right now. Um, I'm gonna do a clip right here. And for the bottom bit, I'll just do a little low ponytail. See that she has little like wispy things down here, like what I've got, although mine are quite a bit longer. <laughs> So I just did my base foundation and stuff just to get that over with. This is always the weirdest part of any makeup video. <laughs> it's when everyone's just got their foundation on and like all their features disappear. She has fairly thin brows. They weren't like that over plucked whatever, but they also weren't super, super dark. They're lighter than her hair color. Um, and I mean, you don't generally see them. She has sort of, um, downward turning eyes. So I'm going to try and go for that more like turned this way sort of, of like wistful droopy at the side eyes. You know what I mean? I'm going to try and straighten it across here and then bring it down because my eyebrows go fairly high up. They're also pretty wide apart, so I don't want to come too far in. I'm also going to use some brow gel to keep them in place because they're being asked to do something they don't normally do. I got brave and thought I'd try just a little bit of contouring to try and you know, bring in that super high cheekbone kind of thing. Now we get to the good stuff. Now we get to the eyeliner. Maureen's eyelids were quite hooded, so naturally she wouldn't tend to go for that sort of 60s cut crease that everyone is doing. Or if she did, it's really hard to tell. So instead she kind of made up for it by just going really heavy on the black eyeliner and bringing it down underneath as well. So I'm gonna start with a white base right, to sort of make that try and stand out a little bit more. Give that impression of a more hooded eye to get a lot of product on and just go ham on my brow bone. This is kind of like an ivory rather than like a stark white. I guess you could use white white if you want to, but I'm going slightly more of a natural like heart 
parchment or something. So I'm going to try and get rid of this darkness here. So I have to try and blend it all in. To get started on the eyes, I'm going to use this really thin brush, just because I want to go a very little bit at a time. I'll also point out that I've taken out my nose ring for the first time in a very, very, very long time. I feel like Maureen might have been someone who'd pierced her nose at some point in time. If that was a thing to do in the 60s, I feel like she definitely would have pierced her nose. Her eyeliner always comes all the way in and quite, oh, actually I'll pull you up, all the way in and then even up a little bit. So really, really, I'm starting off really thin I'm going to build it up. Now the important part is this little bit right here. We're going to mimic the shape of the eyebrow, Oops. like that. And just bring it down to try and get that sort of tilty thing, the droopy eye. You know what I mean? A lot of us nowadays are used to doing the sort of 50s cat eyeliner that sort of has like the flick going up this way. Instead, we're going to turn it upside down and follow the top lash line down. Yeah? Now, what really makes this Maureen Starkey as opposed to anybody else is the under eye bit. She didn't bother with your cute little twiggy lashes. She went for a thick black line. So we're going to do that. Looks like she stops either right in the middle or a little bit over from the people. And it joins up quite nicely with the outer tail here. I'm gonna pop on some liquid liner just on the top, um, and I'll see you in a second. And with the liquid liner, I'm just going over pretty much everything I've just done with the eyeshadow. For most of the 60s, she would have just stopped there, but a little later on in the decade, as styles were turning more towards this sort of Biba, uh, silent film inspired type of thing, uh, she really went in with the dark shadow. A lot of it all over the lid on top and bottom. Black eyeliner on top and bottom, in the waterline, all of that. But we're gonna keep it 60s right now and I'm gonna do some white eyeliner just on the inside here to sort of open my eyes a little more. I didn't film that bit because it can be really disturbing to watch people pull their lids around. Gonna pop some mascara on now, but I'm gonna give it a miss on the false lashes. She definitely would have worn them at some point, um, but not always. Mascara obviously on top and bottom. For my lips, I'm gonna do a very 60s thing, and that is put some eyeshadow on them. The super pale, frosty lip. Put a bit of lip chap on, and pop on the pale. I'm gonna give this a try and see how it goes. This is just like a shimmery beige. makes your lips look really nasty if you're me. I'm gonna return the fringe to its normal state. At some point later in her life she developed leukemia which led to her death in December of 1994 and she was only 48. All I'm doing right now is I'm just sort of thickening up these lines here. Just making them a bit chunkier, you know? And that, my friends, is the look. Very 60s, very mod, with a little dark twist. I've got some outfits over there, I'm gonna pop those on and I'll see you in a second.